Hey folks, today we are going to make some cheddar and herb bread. It's a no knead bread and this thing turned out incredible. It's the first time I've ever tried to make a loaf of bread like this and it was super easy. Uh, it took a long time to rise, so you want to do this in the morning before dinner or do this in before lunch so you can have it for dinner. But this turned out absolutely incredible. I encourage all of y'all to try this. Here's a look at the ingredients you're going to need. There's some sharp New York cheddar, salt, yeast, and of course all-purpose flour. For our herbs, I use oregano and some parsley flakes. First, we start off with three cups of flour. And I need to tell you up front, this is not a light and fluffy loaf of bread that you would want to use for a sandwich. This is a, it's a very dense, hearty bread that you would just want to rip off pieces, maybe dip it in some oil, uh, serve it for the table at a nice dinner type of bread. But the cheese and the herbs are just absolutely insanely delicious on this. I'm using all-purpose flour. I think I'll use bread flour next time. It has a higher protein content. And now we're just going to throw in one teaspoon, not tablespoon, but teaspoon of uh, kosher salt and one packet of active yeast. These things are really, really cheap. It was like 88 cents for a three pack. And then the recipe calls for uh, one and a half cups of warm water. I, I kind of got my uh, uh, mixture wrong here. I added one cup of uh, water and then I realized this is really dry. So I looked back at the direction, added another cup of, of water. And then here in a second, I'll add another cup or I'm sorry, a quarter cup of water for a total of one and a half cups. It's three cups of flour to one and a half cups of water for this bread. There's the extra cup. I am hand mixing this. I see no reason why you could not put this in a mixer with that little uh, bread hook. And the next time I do this, I think I will use a bread hook. But it was easy enough to mix. This is kind of a wet dough, so uh, this is not going to be like a pizza dough where it's really dry, so don't worry about that if everything looks a little bit wet. And I'll tell you guys, despite never baking a loaf of bread like this, I thought it was super easy. Uh, anybody can do it. So mix your bread up. Go ahead and wrap it up and set it aside for a minimum three hours. Eight hours would be better. So if you're going to have this for dinner, do it in the morning. Just let it sit on the counter all day. This is a no need loaf recipe, so nothing complicated to it. At, when you get ready to cook it, go ahead and preheat your oven to 350 degrees. And I'm using parchment paper for a much easier cleanup. So sprinkle some flour on your parchment paper. And then just dump it out and scrape out what you can it's just gonna be a sticky dough there's just no way around that now in some of my research I've seen uh, people uh, talk about if you uh, dip your hands in uh, cold water uh, your fingertips will stick a lot less uh, than than if you don't but I'm just going to use the parchment paper to uh, move this around uh, seems easier for me and I've done this with biscuits before and it, it just seems to work a lot better for me. We're not really needing it, I'm just trying to get this thing uh, sort of worked, sort of flat and workable to where we can put it in the pan. Uh, kneading would be turning it over, pressing it down, folding it over, pressing it down. And I guess technically I just needed it there, but um, we're not doing that multiple times and letting it rest in between. So just trying to sort of get this into uh, a dough that's not sticking. And 
we're going to press it out before we add our herbs. So when I do this again, I'm probably going to use a rolling pin to flatten this out a little bit more. That way our herbs can be spread around uh, a little bit more evenly. So here goes our grating of the uh, Sharp New York Cheddar. Um, I like to use uh, Cabot's. Uh, they uh, produce a, a very fine product. They won a lot of awards for it. It's a, um, oh, what do you call it? You know, it's a, it's, it's a large national brand, of course, but the dairy farmers are actually um, a co-op or cooperative. So the farmers actually do own the brand there. So I use maybe a cup of shredded cheese, spread it out, a couple heavy pinches of oregano, and we'll shake on some uh, dry parsley flakes here. And as I'm doing this video, I realize I'm right-handed. I should probably have the camera on the left most of the time. So just sprinkled in a little bit more flour. I'm going to fold this over. And just, um, I didn't do a very good job of this, but I tried to fold it over so that the, uh, the dough has a bunch of layers and the uh, cheese and the herbs get mixed in really well. If I'd used a uh, mixer, I think that would have done a better job. But either way, this, this thing was... Uh, let's just say it didn't last too long after it was cooked. So now I'm just trying to work it into uh, um, somewhat that looks something that resembles a dough ball. And uh, this is very important. If you have not already, stick your cast iron Dutch oven in the oven. This needs to be hot when we uh, start the process of cooking here. So if you haven't already, stick your Dutch oven in the oven, 350, get it hot. That looks pretty good, folks. Uh, not the best, but hey, it will work. Now we're just gonna score a couple of lines. I'm told this is to let the heat out um, and let it steam evenly. Um, either way, it's kind of pretty. All right, we're gonna take the lid off and this needs to be hot, folks. It should have already been in the oven, heating up the whole time. If not, wait for it and we are just going to pick up the entire thing resist the urge to oil this pan the uh, oil at this high heat will uh, turn to carbon at least that's what i've read so you don't need it the parchment paper uh, serves as a non-stick surface um, so no oil no grease just throw it in parchment paper and all stick that in the oven and bake it for 30 minutes. Sonoma uh, pot holder here. I've actually had that thing more than 20 years and it still works. So the bread steamed up, fogged up my camera. I can't help but uh, grab a piece of that and it was absolutely incredible. But resist the urge to eat it now. It's not done. Throw it back in your oven for another 15 minutes uncovered and there we go. That is just golden brown and delicious. Now, this is going to be the hard part, folks. You're going to need to let it rest. And let it cool down. So, go ahead and take it out of that hot Dutch oven. Because we're done cooking. It's got a lot of residual heat, so it's still cooking. Now look at that. That is uh, just gorgeous. All that melted cheese and herbs, this thing smells incredible, but we still need to let it rest. If you don't have a baking rack, this is actually the rack from my uh, uh, Instapot. And the next time I made this, uh, my wife kind of laughed at me. So why are you using that? We've got four cooling racks from when I bake cookies. It's above the, the sink. But either way, look at that gorgeous, gorgeous artisan bread. So we've let it cool at this point. I don't know, maybe 